I have a very messy paint palette tray here and I'm just about to pack up for the day and there's not really, all this paint's quite wet, there's not really a huge quantity of paint on here but there's enough here that I don't want to waste it so I've got quite a few large canvases around. This one's got a bit splattered, it's just got the um, gesso that's on it already from the manufacturer so you, you can work directly onto it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some gesso straight from the pot onto here and then I'm going to use up all the colour that I have on my tray on here with various different brushes. And I'm just going to be completely random and this is always a really fun part of, of working, I find, is, is, is to do that because obviously you're going to be using up your paint which is good, so it's not going to go to waste. But also, you know, I haven't considered at all what I'm going to do on this canvas, and it's really nice to have something to respond to. And it's also a great opportunity to experiment with your tools if you're not used to doing that, because I think we all have a habit of choosing our favourite things to paint with. And I have a vast array of brushes and different tools that I forget I have because you, you have a habit. So it's good, a good way to kind of practice and break out of that habit. So, right, I'm going to get on with it. I'm going to just slap some gesso on now. I'll use a fairly, fairly big brush. Well, actually, no, not that one, because that one's my varnish brush, my new one. Right, I'll get a different brush. So I'm going to dip that into the pot and I'm glad I did because it reminds me that I want to order some more. This is the normal gesso, not the sandable one. The sandable one you really should only use on really rigid supports because it could crack if you put it on, on, on paper or um, say a large canvas or um, particularly if you were working on canvas that was loose and pinned to the wall, you would want to make sure you use this, this sort of gesso, or gesso, I should say. I'm just going to, I'm just making random areas, and of course you could use some water at this point, make it a bit thinner. I'm quite happy to, to experiment and see I have have areas which are a bit textured. I quite like to break away from the rigid, um, sort of regiment, regimented weave of the canvas. And also, the paint I'm going to use up is quite wet, so. Spread more easily. Of course, this is only going to be pastel colours, really. That will do for now. And I will use a different brush. I'm going to use this lovely cake. But before I do, got some paint on these spatulas that I love. This is one of my favourites, so I'm not really doing what I said I would do, am I? Oops. I just splashed that under there.
It's actually not as runny as I thought. It's quite sticky, so I'm just having to hold the paper down while I get some onto the brush. I managed to get paint all over my chair. Well, not all over it, but just a big splat of it. So I'm just cleaning that up. What lovely shades of mud. But this is just the beginning, that's the point. It really, at this point, does not matter what it looks like. The problem with that brush, the problem with that brush, of course, is it's so wide, I really need my big jug, water jug, to put it in, which I don't have in here right now. Well, there's a little spot of blue. thinking about this at all. I'm just enjoying whatever arrives. Because all of this will get covered up. It doesn't matter. It's an unusual colour palette. It's not one I've used before. I like it though. Right, and then, as I've actually got less paint here than I thought, I'm going to use the actual baking parchment. You can see how much stronger the colours were oh there's a lovely bit of pink and of course you can use your hands she says as if it's never occurred to her it has occurred to me and I do use that I imagine this is probably going to have 20 more layers on this. I imagine that this one may end up being a complete abstract. I actually really like it, as it is, but that's far too easy. Definitely pl plenty of room for contemplation. If you do have the luxury of a reasonably large space, or even a small space like I have, 
but that is exclusively for painting, then I would recommend having a large canvas around so that you can just practice and see how you can use the brushes that you have and any other implements. For example, I have this painter's edge and even though I've just done that, I could go through and scrape and see what happens. I don't want to do it everywhere. is not to be precious about it, not to think that it has to be an amazing piece of artwork, it's just a giant plaything for you to experiment on and just go with it. See what happens. If you look at something like this and think that you love it exactly as it is, then great. But of course, I want to do more on this but there are things that you can learn at every stage you can make notes you can say to yourself well I love using that hake brush the way it's so soft and yet has lines like grooves of paint and you'll remember in time particularly if you make notes and maybe even take photographs you'll remember what you used and what has what effect and you could keep a certain area you could put a glaze on next a completely different color and see what happens so i will carry on working on this and it may end up being a still life painting or it may end up being a complete abstract we will see but i just wanted to show you what i do have fun <laughs>